What's up, everybody? We're at the 2024 Grand National Roadster Show in Pomona, California, and we're here with Rick Doberton, who's got his featured two builds, the 65 Nova and the J2000. We're in the beautiful NHRA Museum, just getting an exclusive interview to just, uh, you know, kind of dig into your, you know, past life building these cars and how these cars came to be. Well, it's, uh, this car has actually started when I bought my speed shop, or got my speed shop going. It was AA Speed and Custom, and we decided to uh, specialize in turbochargers and superchargers. Yeah. And that was, because uh, nobody was doing that. They were doing their regular four barrels and yep. stuff like that. And we had taken a class on turbos, and, the, and we were so impressed with the power they, they made. So we had these T-shirts made up. Oh, oh for, for the shop, yeah. Yeah, the... That's kind of tacky, but uh, it gets people's attention. <laughs> and then on the back, it says... Turbo Dynamics. What do we got here? <laughs> You're right here. It says turbochargers and superchargers. And just the shirts being hung up there and walking by them all the time, I thought turbochargers and superchargers. Why don't we put turbochargers and a supercharger on the same car? Because I hadn't seen that been done before. Yeah, yeah. So because this is late 70s, you know, turbo boom kind of happens right right about that time. Yep. Um, yeah, very late 70s. Yep. And that's when you started looking for a Nova, or how did the Nova come to be? Well, the Nova, I, I'd seen this Nova race car called Animal Man in uh, when I'd go by, uh, and I, I tried to buy it. It was for sale, no engine or trans. It was one of the yep. gassers with the front end way off the yep, ground yep. and everything. So I tried to do everything. I almost got down to where the guy that owned the car was going to co-sign my loan because <laughs> I was, you know, yeah. young and all that yeah. stuff. And he's going to keep the car. So I mean, yeah. hey, you know, it, it worked out for him. Yep. So, uh, but that didn't pan out. So I, I kept my eye out for Novas. And then when I got to a point where I wanted to build something for the shop to, uh, you know, promote the shop, plus you can use it as a little bit of a write-off. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. There's the few things. Not that yeah. I would <laughs> do that, but. Uh, so there was the Nova, and, and I thought, what I'm going to do with this is build a pro streeter, because that was something that was very new, you yeah. know, the race car stuff for the street. And I'd start with a big block Chevy, and then I'd try to figure out run, how to run turbos with the supercharger. And it, it turns out it's, there's really not a lot of science in it, because the turbos work together, but independently with the supercharger. Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. Yeah, the, yeah. the turbos pick up the air, compress a little bit, send it up to the blower, it compresses it again. And you can make a lot of boost, but if you tune them both down reasonable so you don't have to rebuild the engine because you did something stupid on the road, yeah, uh, it's it's very dependable and, you know, it turns starts right up just like a regular car and yeah. everything, but it does have the power there. And I still have people today that think it's fake. They say, there's no way you could do that, but it's not fake. <laughs> And I've sold yeah. the cars, and they've taken them apart and they're polish right. yeah. everything, yeah. and they're not fighting. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, the Pro Street look. Is that something that, you know, were guys building stuff that was coined Pro Street at the time? Or is it more of a look that you liked, and, and that's just what you wanted to build? Well, they were, no, they were, Scott Sullivan had a, had a Nova. It was funny that Scott Sullivan had a Nova, and he was Street Machine of the Year, I think in 79, and I okay. had a Blue Nova, and I was, uh, Street Machine of the Year. So what you're saying 82. is you're just a copycat, or, or no? no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Let's back that up. Can yeah, we yeah. cut that out? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it was it was everybody that builds a car. You, there's there's two ways of looking at it. You you, you see a car you really like, and I'm gonna oh that's so beautiful. I love it. Yeah. I want to build something like that. Yeah. You know, a Camaro with this color and this wheels yeah. and everything, which is great. And then there's think my look was as soon as it's been done. It's been done. Yeah, and you move know, on. I don't need yeah. to do it again. Somebody did it. Yeah. And so, uh, but and when his blue Nova came out, I thought maybe I should paint. And I thought, no, I want I want it to be blue. I want it to be the bluest blue. I don't want it to look like a tint of green in it or purple yeah. or anything. And uh, I got a guy named Chip Whittington to do the paint. He did an excellent job on the paint. It's forty years old and it yeah, still so looks, looks new. So good. Yeah. It's unbelievable, but. Uh, no, it was, it was, so I built it with the turbos and we started the car up. We had a regular intake manifold on it and broke the engine in that yep. way. And then we added the turbos and the blower and everything. And there's a little a little trick to starting it up. You got to kind of flutter the uh, gas pedal when you do it. So you got some 
gas squirting in yeah, here yeah, and there. Yeah. It's Cause it's, it's three feet away from the engine when it goes into turbos. It's <laughs> yeah. like, when am I, you know, where do you want me to go? <laughs> you know, and the motor's yeah. sucking it in and, yeah. and it starts right up and then you go, oh, it, ooh, it works. <laughs> it works, all right, all right. <laughs> and it was pretty quick. I mean, it would, uh, you could step on it, you know, you could get in trouble real quick. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's another thing. It's it's not that he, I, I couldn't race it, but why take the chance? People say, you should race that thing. And it's like, yeah. and then we'd always hear the thing, is it a, is it a race car or just a show car? And a <laughs> just thing, it was like, yeah. oh, come on. You know, if, uh, if I, well, I had a, a, a good example of that. I had a friend with Tourette's yeah. syndrome. And he had a GTO that was, you know, really immaculate. It yep. was candy red, top and bottom, frame, everything. Everything's yep. chromed and everything like this. We did a car show, and he's he's on one side of the aisle, and there's this guy with this GTO, same year, 67 or something, race car. Yeah. And that guy comes over, and now remember, my friend's got Tourette's. <laughs> this guy comes over and says, is that a show, is that a race car, or you just show it? And he says, oh, we just show it. He goes, thought so. And my friend gets up and he walks over to this guy says, I race mine. Mine's a race car. <clears throat> my friend looks over and he goes, yeah, if mine turned out that crappy, I'd probably race it too. <laughs> and I thought, oh, here we go. Because he'd done stuff like this before, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we, 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 got him, days, we got yeah. him to just calm down. But it was, it was, it was, oh, that's it was awesome. funny. Yeah, it was funny. So yeah, looking back through that car, there was a comment made about just, bringing show cars or car builds to the next level. And it was just mm. about how it was really different to take the show car, you know, immaculate build quality and then like attribute it to a build that is kind of a race theme. I mean, is that something that you wanted or were you just trying to build something at the best that you could build? I look at the positives of obsessive compulsive disorder, Yeah, which I don't know if I really have, but I, I I wanted to be a perfectionist. I think my father was that way. And uh, and my mom would always say, oh, you know, don't, you, 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 it, it's not fun if you gotta make it perfect. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, it's not it's not worth doing if you can't make it perfect. And, yeah. and uh, so, yeah, I wanted to make the race car thing the, uh, the pro street thing, but I also wanted to incorporate a lot of the show stuff and the chrome and the stuff to, Accentuate, you know, accentuate the the race car stuff. Yeah. But you know, with the detail and stuff, which you didn't see on a lot of these. A lot of them were thrown together, and the cars were really cool. But they were more race cars. You yeah. Know, the, and they didn't have the slick paint and stuff. But there were there were some of them out there. A lot of people have said that that the Nova transformed some of the car culture in the country. But it was it was there before yeah. the Nova. Yeah. I mean, this might have brought a little bit more attention to it, but. I don't know if you can credit it with that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is beautiful and it is, the attention to detail is, I think, what made it so impressive at that time. I mean, just reading some of the comments and the quotes from the magazines mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, it is interesting that, like, everyone noticed it. Like, that that's right. what's, what's cool is that, you know, it didn't come out and kind of get left. Like, people saw it and, and really appreciated the quality of it and taking those race car aspects and bringing over the detail of that show car. I mean, you look at it and, you know, it's still impressive today. Just, you know, all the neat and tidy details. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, it was, we did, when we went to Springfield, the Street Machine Nationals yep. in 82, it was its debut show. And I mean, you couldn't see the car all weekend because there was crowds around it, which was very flattering. Yeah. And it, uh, it won the Pro Street. We got best car, best pro street car, best grand champion. We got every, everything but best interior and best paint. We got like second or third on those yeah. and first on all the other stuff. Engineering first. Yeah, engine the, first. the engineering one is an interesting. Yeah. And, and that's actually a question I do have for you. What are your favorite parts of the car? What did you look back at and go, ooh, I really liked what we did on this? I, I guess, well, it's the main thing on the car is the twin turbos and the blower and it, everything works and it was one of those things where it it, it <clears throat> we were at the point where we're thinking it's got to work i mean yeah. it's yeah. but nobody there's no proof till you get it all together yeah. you know yeah. you got to do everything and you got to do it right and and put it you know and seal everything and everything and then cross your fingers and hit the key and when it starts up in 2 seconds 
you think, son of a gun, it does work, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, we weren't just crazy, you know? No, well... <laughs> maybe. No, we're crazy and it worked. <laughs> well, then are you really crazy? Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stop seeing my therapist now. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but he's got quite a sense of humor. Oh, well, there's these two guys. No, no, no we're not going into kidding. that. We're not going into that. All right, I'm kidding. So the Nova blows up, and it's you know in all the magazines. It wins all the awards. Okay, what do you do? What's next? I mean, do you get approached by people to say, all right, what are you building next? Do you feel like you need to take it to the next level? Like, how does how do you transition out of the Nova to going all in on the J2000? You know, this is silly, but I didn't think about this till just now. Oh. One of the things that was the catalyst for it was John Asher, who was the editor of CarCraft, said, if you build another car, I will guarantee you a cover and a, probably a two-part article. So there was a deal made. Yeah, you know, I, you know it, it sounds funny, but I, I, that's, I'd already been thinking about something. Okay. And then yep. he, he came up with that, and I thought... Cool, and originally the J2000 was gonna be a turbine car. Really? Yep, yep, I had, I bought one, I got $3,800 down on one somewhere. <laughs> never got that, never see that again. But <laughs> Turbine um, car, huh? Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. But that was the most hot rod car craft and all the people say, well, if we wanted to see a car with a salvage yeah. military engine in it, we'd go to something else. Okay, said, okay, so you said, all right, we gotta back well, it down and do something a little bit, I mean, yeah. more traditional. <clears throat> right, and uh, so, yeah, that was that would have been kind of cool, I, but I'm glad it went the way it did because it, there's a lot of technology and a lot of stuff you, that I wasn't thinking about. Yeah, at that time. You know, you had a 14-inch exhaust pipe. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's what, and so then you, you can't be around the car really out the back, you know? That's right, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, if somebody honks at you at a stoplight, though, you can burn the paint off their hood. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I mean, that's probably not what you were building it for, but nope. it's always nope. a good side, yeah, you know, side a, effect. Yeah, dual purpose. Yeah, dual purpose. Okay, yeah. so keeping with that Pro Street theme, you always say that there's, you know, 11 things that make a car Pro Street or that yep. you came up with. Right. Right. And that was that from just looking around the industry with the oh, yeah. Nova. And you said, okay, this is what makes a car Pro Street. Right. How do I take that to the next level. And that's, and I'm assuming that's kind of how this, this worked? Yeah, pretty much. It was, oh, it was tires, you know, wide tires. So, okay, in my checklist, it would be to put the biggest tires that there are, not that you can find, they don't even have to exist, because I got with Firestone, and they made me tires that were four inches wider, or six inches wider than anything they'd done before, because I had these inserts they could put in the mold. I don't know how it works, <laughs> but these really? things were monsters. And Jeez. when we put them on, they're 15 by 20 wheels, so they're actually like 21 inches wide. You know how wheels measure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it ends up with it less than eight inches between the tires. And then I, did I tell you about the axles? No. Okay, so well, I, now you are. Okay, so with this setup, it was a Dana 60, and I needed to get short axles. And I had a speed shop, so I'd call Strange to order a customer's axles. You needed some 26-inch ones for a Camaro. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I got you on the phone. What can you can do? Can you do a, like an 11-inch axle? And the guy goes, <laughs> well, yeah, I guess we can do any size you want. And I said, oh, that's cool. Well, that, that's good to know. Thanks. Well, I'll order those axles, meaning the 26-inch yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple weeks later, a package ends up from Strange. It's kind of heavy, and it's only that long. <laughs> and I and thought, go. oh, man, I know what happened. And I opened the box, and there are these two short little axles in there. So I called the guy up and reminded him. And yeah. he goes, oh, man. Yeah, I sent him back. So I sent him back, and I get the other axles. Yeah. And then, then it was like nine months later when I was finally getting, you know, the it's parts to where I could get all that stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, the tires only have like a four-inch back spacing, so the dish is like 16 <laughs> inches. Yeah, so I get these, I, I call him on the axles, I say, I'd like to order some like 11 inch axles. The guy goes, you know, I think you're in luck. I remember saying that and I said, what's up? He says, we got two small axles here. I have no idea what they're about, <laughs> who got them, what, why we have them. Said, but you know what? Because I'd dealt with them before. He said, I'll send them to you for nothing. And I thought <laughs> the axles that you originally yeah, that I ordered. ordered. <laughs> Should I say Man. anything here? No, don't say anything. Need to hang out with you more. I yeah, mean, right. That, that's a win-win. Yeah, that was good. Well, they got their money. I, I let them, oh, you yeah. know, use it in advertising yep, and everything. Yep. But it was a it was a cool thing on our, on our website, Darberton Performance. Yep. 
we've got you know pictures of the rear end and stuff and it's i mean it's that yeah. you know disc to disc is like this that's incredible <clears throat> and then i yeah. that got me into trouble one time in the street machine nationals and everybody's spinning the tires yeah. doing a little burnout so i did and you one. think you're and you think you're cool except to you realize you have that much rubber under the car no i got it i got it to do it oh nice I, and and then this cop or security guy comes over and goes yeah. he said, hey cut that out and i said oh you know i'm thinking oh man come on and he comes over and he says, you don't do that burnout stuff. I said, I didn't do that. You know, a little halo came on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, come with me. We go walk back about 20 yards. And he says, tell me what other car can make marks like that in the road. And here are these two <laughs> wide patches with only that much between them. And, uh, <laughs> and they knew for certain it was yeah. you. <laughs> said, eh, You're leaving you your mark everywhere. Yeah, right. Guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, that, was, that was kind of funny. What is another key characteristic that you really needed for a pro street bill that you wanted to bring into the J2000? Well, um, one thing, I'd worked with stainless steel a little bit, and everybody's yep. got a roll bar and roll cages. And, you know, once in a while you see a chrome, yeah. you know, stuff. And, and I thought, you know, stainless steel would be a really good medium or a really good starting point for a frame realizing, of course, <laughs> or not realizing that there's a lot of, the way you get the tubing to where the, it looks now is quite a difference. Yeah. And the welding, as far as welding it up, I wanted to be able to polish out the wells, smooth them out, but I didn't want to cut into the wells. Yeah. So I ended up welding everything three passes at least to build up. To build this, it up. Yeah, because up. by the time you blend that, you don't want sure. to be below And, the and I've got a lot more weld in there than a, than a regular car anyway, even though... I think NHRA frowns against grinding wells, but it, I don't think those are what they're thinking about. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're worried about that one. No, but uh, so anyway, it, it was a basically about a year to make the frame and polish it. You yeah, know. you got to have that vision so far out to yeah. keep motivated, I feel like, for that This thing. is one of those ignorance is bliss oh, thing. If okay. I had known <laughs> it was going to cost that much and take that long, yep. it would be painted silver. <laughs> You know, yeah, the best chrome paint you can that, find, right? The, yeah. the best, the best. <laughs> and I polish the paint. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, looking back, of course, it's worth putting in the effort because it's, you know, it's, it's sometimes you think oh, I don't want to do this, but then how long am I going to be using it, or how long are people going to see it, or yeah. what? Yeah, put it, I'll put in the effort. And you know what, though, it kind of worked out. Yeah, yeah. So people remember it from that. I, I when I first brought it out, they'd say, "Wow, where'd you find a chrome?" that big enough to put that frame in. I heard that a thousand times. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you actually got a lot of those comments because right. no one's ever seen some of this stuff done right. for like the, is it fake? Right, you know? oh, right. <laughs> well, the other, the thing about stainless is if you screw up and you put a bolt in the wrong place, even after the car is done, you just weld it shut, sand it a little bit or, or a lot, <laughs> a whole lot, and and the hole's gone, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Other, and a paint, painted car, you can do that, but you're going to just have Try to... Try to blend that yeah, paint in, yeah. yeah. you're not going to do it. So, polished frame, you know, crazy tires. What, what are the other couple pillars that you really wanted to have in there? Well, the, uh, the interior, you wanted high tech, and you wanted the racing seats and a lot of gauges. Yeah. Yeah. Nova had a lot of gauges. Yeah. Like, oh, one yeah. side to the other. <laughs> you know, that was... A lot of people yeah. made comments on... Nobody said it was, it was stupid, which... And it wasn't, you could... You probably sold a bunch of auto meter gauges because yeah. of that. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, and, and you could, you'd have to get out of the seat to read the yeah. far ones. Though. Well, that's why you, you bring somebody who's, you know, bold enough to ride along. There you go. Yeah, and they can tell you the boost over there. That's right. <laughs> or put some mirrors up or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you, you got some, you got a pretty good size gauge pot in that. Yeah. But uh, let's see, another thing would be, well, the tilt body was something that I hadn't seen before. The tilt body is clever. I mean, I wish it went up more, but really, well, it wasn't to to get in that way because it would have to go up so high. So to, high, yeah, to, because to know, get over that gauge right. there, yeah, You'd never do it. But uh, when when we open it up, we open the back up and the, we open the front first, and then we open the back, and then there's two posts that I put up in there, safety ones. Yeah. And in case you get an airline blowout or something, the thing would crash yeah, down. Yeah, because it's pneumatic, right? And yeah. uh, first show we're at, some guy stuck his head in between the X and the body, and he's looking oh. around, and I pulled him back out by his belt. <laughs> and I said, hang on a minute. If you want to look in there, let me put these safety things in there. He's like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then, then when I was building the car, uh, 
I had the pneumatics all the way in, and I was going to test the, you know, raising it up and everything. And I had the airline to the shop with a ball valve, yeah. and I didn't realize I had 150 pounds of pressure going to that ball to valve. <laughs> and I turned it on, and then there's a regular. I was going to yeah. crank it up. Well, yeah. I, this one, the regular is all the way up. I turned it up, and the body jumped. The back body jumped up so fast that the front wheels came off the ground just an inch or so. And then it startled me, so I popped it off and it, it dropped the oh. body and blew out the windshield. No way. Oh, yeah. Well, this was before it was painted or oh, anything okay. like that. So at that was, point, it had to have been reinforced and, and, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we had to build a whole frame around the doors, the windows, all the way to the back. Just to get it to kind of stand. Yeah, to get it so we could have a, still a door slammer. Well, that's, can, that's you, like one of the coolest parts of it, well, is that you kept the door yeah, functional. Yeah, yep. The doors, doors will open, and you can open them, shut them. You can open them with it open, with the body up, and they'll still sh close fine. Oh, geez, yeah. Because it's yeah. solid. But, uh, because you got, you have the, the pivot point and the pneumatics towards the rear. Oh, yeah. So you got to have a lot of, you got to have a lot of structure oh, yeah. in there to pull yeah. that whole nose For up. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, and we overkilled it, of course, or I overkilled it because we didn't, I didn't want to have it with the, the pneumatic arms going up and then the body buckle or something. Oh yeah, that would... of course that'd be that'd be the worst case scenario. Or the paint crack the paint. You right. Know? Yeah. That's where I'd put my signs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> J two thousand. You know, you, what you got three four years in this car. Three. Three years in this car. Did you expect it to be as successful or as well known as? No. It was. I mean, you know, the amount of people hovering around that. You know, even now. Right. You know, I mean, I look at it coming from a new generation of people who are into cars, and, and it's incredibly impressive now. I mean, it should do an all other lap around all the circuits again. You know, it's just, it, it's innovative. Yeah, I know. And I know what you mean. I don't, like, I'm just curious because you don't often meet people who, you know, kind of pioneer looks or pioneer genres of a specific industry. And, like, that car is kind of synonymous with this whole Pro Street era. And it's just, you know, did you know that's what it was going to be? No. No, you. No, well, I always set my sights. My goals high, but my sights are lower, you know. <laughs> and uh, or gonna, expectations. Gonna, yeah. yeah. You know, if I can get it to the show without uh, <laughs> without it falling out the back of the trailer. <laughs> In fact, the, the one of the really cool things is Jeff Smith with uh, Hot Rod. Yep. Got or he was with Carcraft. Sorry, sorry, Jeff. At the time. At the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was cover the cover of Carcraft that it debuted on. And uh, he set up the GM photo studio to do the shoot. And yep. it was just the, the wizardry and the, the way they set up to, for the backlighting and the stripes and behind yeah. the car and everything was so cool. But one thing we had is a remote opener for the door, yep. for the, both doors and the rear hatch. So I saw Jeff was standing next to me by the car. So I leaned into the car and I went, and then I had the door opener in my pocket. Yeah. And I hit it with my thumb and it popped the door open. And, and Jeff says, what's that? And I said, it's a voice activated door opener. He goes, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> is this recently? No, this is when we first got the car. First, okay. And yeah, he was gonna yeah. film it for a car craft. <laughs> and he says, can I try it? And I said, sure. And he goes, nothing. And I said, you gotta bring it up at the end. And he goes, and I said, no, you got to go higher at the end. And he goes, <laughs> this poor guy's leaning yeah. to the car. He's doing all this stuff and he's spraying the car with it, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, 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 I forgot to push the button when you did that. And he goes, oh. <laughs> this is what I mean about we, you can't we, hang we out with him. Yeah, we you can't laugh, hang out yeah. with him. You're, you're going to get made fun of. Uh, no. <laughs> Always in good humor, though. Yeah. I mean, is that something that was kind of like new at the time? Oh, is totally that, That's new. probably no. why no one suspected anything. No, yeah, no okay. there was nothing. Well, they had... They had the uh, the little keypads you could do, yeah, and it would pop yeah. the door open and yep. stuff. And that was that was a Ford thing, I think. It came out on Lincoln's yep. or something. Something like that, yep. And this guy had a car, so I said, Rick, I got to show you what I did to my car. And we're at his car, and my car's about six cars down, and he goes, he doot, 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 doot. And then it goes, dunk, what do you think? And I pulled the thing out, and I pointed it at my car, and went, boom, <laughs> and my door opened. <laughs> I can't tell you what he said, <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny. Oh yeah, that well, was funny. You know, that's the that's innovation. The, that's the fun with the cars, though. Anyway. Yeah. Now, summing it up, what is your favorite part of the car? 
I mean, what, is there something unique that you really like to do, or was it that stainless frame? Is that something that you always wanted, or was there something that you really look back and go, I really like that, that we, we pulled it'd that be, off? It, it would be the frame yeah. or the engine. Yeah. I had a guy at a show I, that we did, probably the last show we did, was talking about, he says, you know, stainless will last forever. And I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, kind of. And he goes, I mean, this could last if the earth got blown up that frame would probably still be together. And I said, yeah. He said, they can see the guys from Star Trek coming in going, oh, it looks like a late 20th century pro street frame, <laughs> <laughs> Captain, you know? <laughs> I think they need to make an episode or a That's movie right. about that. That'd That's be good. That's right. But uh, <laughs> and I, I don't remember who said that, but it wasn't me. Yeah. But it was uh, funny. What would you give for advice to people kind of coming up trying to get into cars or you know see car builders out there i mean everything has gotten to be you know, such high level there's everybody building everything all the time you know what would you give for advice to somebody who wants to kind of start from scratch and kind of start getting into the car scene collect stamps <laughs> no. <laughs> not not seriously um the way to to do is is, is don't Try not to be a perfectionist. That'll, that'll take the fun out of building it. Make friends with people that you can barter with. If you're good yeah. at working on an engine, yeah. make friends with a painter. Not, not to use them, but I mean, it, that bartering system really works to keep the prices down. Yeah. And that's yeah. helped me so much. I mean, I've welded up stuff for people, and then they've you know, done upholstery for me. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. And uh, that, that's a big thing. And just get a car that you... Figure out exactly how long it's going to take to do and exactly how much money it's going to cost up front. And then double the time and triple <laughs> the money. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. That's, that'll be about right. Yeah. And remember, parts. getting parts early is a good idea. You know, I used to say, uh, plan your build and build your plan. Hmm. Because if you start buying, oh, I'm going to go with two four barrels. Oh, no, I want to put a tunnel rim on. Now you got to sell that one at a reduced thing. Oh. Get this one. Put this on. Do all this. And then always assume that the next hot rod comes out before your car is finished, there's going to be one just like it that just got finished yeah. a few months earlier. Yeah. Don't get depressed over that because it happens. Yeah. It does. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great sport. It keeps you out of trouble. Yeah. And, and if somebody comes up and says, do you race it or just show it? Say, I just show it because I, that's what I built it for. I didn't <laughs> build it to race if it... If it uh, if I was going to race it, it wouldn't look this good. Yeah, yeah. Which well, is and also, it wouldn't be losing either. Right, yeah. right, <laughs> like, right. You're lucky that I didn't build it for racing. <laughs> right, right. Good, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That would be good. Awesome. No. Now, Rick, what are you up to now? Well, I've uh, I've changed away from the, moved away from the pro street stuff. Yeah. I got, believe it or not, back into, into Manta kit car. I bought a Manta kit car. Yeah. And this was your typical eBay scam. I yeah. mean, I, I, I can't believe I got caught in no, it. But not this with was a kit a, car. No. Uh, well, I did a kit <laughs> car because a friend of mine had one of these. His yeah. name was Bob Dick. Back in when I had my speed shop, he had a Manta. Yeah. And it was a and it was a blast to drive. And it wasn't real expensive. And you could have a lot of fun and feel like you're in a go-kart. Yeah. yeah. You're know, going a thousand yeah, miles I mean, an you're hour. Sitting on the ground and so I bought this one. It was supposed to be perfect and everything, and it's on it's on it's on my website. Yeah. Get a good laugh. I can laugh at it now, yeah. but at the time I could not. Yeah. But um, I got into that, and I wanted to put. It, they used a Corvair rear suspension yeah. in it, and I wanted to use figure out a way to do a Corvette one. Well, that's a that is a horrendous job. I mean, that is weeks yeah. trying to figure out where to put sixteen different mounts. Yeah, it just arbitrary points too. Yeah, 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 and it's a five five axis or what yeah. is what is the CNC five? Yeah, five. It's the same thing. Are they in? Are they out? Are they twisted? Are they yeah. up? The up down? Mm -hmm. You can't do it. So I came up with this. Uh, we we bought a, a flood damaged frame, so we knew the frame was perfect. Yeah, and um, built a jig and put the frame in and physically built a. Uh, what would become a casting that you can bolt on the cradle on a C5 or C6 cradle, yeah. and it's got all the mounting points for your upper Rear A arms, and, for yeah. Um, yeah, that, the shocks, the everything. Hmm. So you can bolt that on your cradle, yeah. and you've got a top to bottom thing you can mount everything in, and then we have two troughs built in that are 
two by four inches for your frame. Yep. You can put a back half frame in it and literally slide this thing under, raise it up, and bolt it, and your suspension's done. Hmm. And I mean, uh, yeah, you, can, you can put a bed suspension in your car in a day. Jeez, yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a clever way to see. That's what I like about you is it's all, you're always thinking, but you're always thinking kind of engineering, like, like how do I make this easier? How do I make this clever? And well, why reinvent the wheel on the suspension? True. And you can just adapt it. True. I, I, I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> See, I won't tell you all the behind the scenes thing, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's good. So that we, the business is uh, Dauberton Performance. You okay. can find it on the internet. Yep. And uh, you know, that's what we specialize in. Nice. We, now, sold, we sold about 400 of them and, and everybody likes them. Nobody's really? returned one. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You can't complain there. No, yeah. but then I've had, I've, I'm up to six Mantas now and I've never, I, number Wait, four. you have six No, I don't know. No, no. I bought had. them and okay, sold them. Okay. But the number the four dealer. car, well, I, I, I got that one and it was, by the time I got done with that yeah. one that I got scammed on, then I got another one and I got it found a buyer right away. So that went, then another one. Then I, I, uh, I said, okay, that's it. Number four is going to get a vet suspension. And the vet suspension was in the car. We took the body off the back. I say we, that's me and my... Uh, <laughs> Your imaginary my, friend. My other, yeah, my imaginary <laughs> friend. It's right here, right now. <laughs> but um, I had the, modified the frame and had it ready to mount in in less than a day. And we bolted the suspension up the next day and it was at a full Corvette running gear, in, or, yeah, running yeah. gear in the back. Wow. And... So that was the catalyst for that, pretty much. And now you're selling them for different things, or is it specific to a vehicle? Nope, nope, no, no, they'll so fit anything? just about anything. Okay. Uh, our big sellers are um, pickup trucks, yep. uh, Camaros, Chevelles, stuff. It's all back it's half all, of those. Yep, yep. you got a back half it, but once you do, you don't have to put any brackets on our stuff. It's, it's, so it's easier than a, than a four link or yeah. a ladder bar because. Once the frame's done, you just slide this under, raise it up. And bolt it in. Yeah, we usually tell the people to put a C-clamp on it so they can put the body back down or whatever. That, you know, if it's a pickup, yeah. they can put the bed back on and then make, you know, yeah. sight it. <laughs> Get a wheelbase. You know, go back, go back a half inch. Ah, that looks right. And then you just uh, drill a couple holes and mount it right up. Yeah. So, and it's aircraft aluminum. So oh, nice. It's slight. Good. Nice. That website is Dauberton Performance, where you can go check it out. You can check out even all of your previous builds and some yep. information on there. The information on the that Manta scam story no, that, is that, on there. It is funny now. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, oh my God. It's, it's that type two fun. It's always funny in hindsight. Yeah, you know? yeah I can't <laughs> even tell you what the guy, what our conversations were like. Yeah. <laughs> Not pleasant. Yeah. But, well, Rick, I really appreciate you stopping in. I'd like to thank Matt Hay and uh, Joe uh, for just getting these cars out here and bringing Rick out here so that we could kind of do this. And I'd like to thank the NHRA Museum for letting us have this little corner here to, to film. It's a beautiful building. If you haven't been out here, they got beautiful stuff. Check out the Grand National Roadster Show. There is just, the level oh, of cars here is just incredible. See, you know, that's another thing. You And I really appreciate the, the ego <laughs> thing here, um, you, yep. you yeah. felt, oh, I can't, none of my hats are going to fit or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but I've said, and I, I'll tell you, if, if I had brought that car out today, you know, people would look at it just like anything else because the stuff that's out here today, the, the, the cars that are being built today are just, they're beyond that. Ah. No. You know, I don't know. You know what you got? You got the creativity and you did it before somebody else did it. And that's, I feel like that's the key. No, no, you know, no, that's no, more important. no. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, a little bit of a jokester. Yeah. But no, I appreciate that. I appreciate all the people that have supported the car and, know, and I came to here to see this car and all that stuff. That really makes me feel good. Yeah. So No, it's, it's been great to see. It's been great to, you know, talk with you. It's been great to be able to set up and just capture, you know, you being out here with your cars and what a great environment to do it. And if you guys haven't checked out the Grand National Rosa show, please get out here because this was our first time out here. And oh, it is. I tell you what, it doesn't disappoint. No, <laughs> not at all. Except for the parking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get that worked out next yeah, year. I almost, yeah. I almost say that. No, it's perfect in every way. In every way. Yeah. No, it really okay. is. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, Rick. Thank you. Yeah. Take it easy, guys, and uh, check out our channel and uh, go to uh, Dauberton Performance website and go to our website, Retroformance, for more interviews we're hoping to do. And we'll, uh, we'll try to see if we can get up to your place and uh, do a couple more of these. I got to start cleaning tomorrow. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. <laughs>